Hello and welcome to this week's episode. And this week I am absolutely thrilled to have um, Crystal Prophet on the show. She is one of my guides, one of my mentors when it comes to podcasting. She has encouraged me to get started and here we are. We have the Turning Readers into Writers podcast. Um, But over the course of working with her on podcasting, she let slip that she is also a writer. And so I couldn't wait to get her on the show and discover more about what she's writing, how she got started and how she combines her business life, her work life and her writing life. So let's dig in. So, Crystal, thank you so, so much for coming on the show today. I'm absolutely delighted to have you here. Yes, thank you, Emma. (laughs) I wonder if you could just start and tell us a little bit about yourself, because I know that you are a busy mom with three boys, I believe. So that's full on. And um, and then you also run a business. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes. So um, I feel like it's only fitting, especially if we're going to talk about writing, to take like, let's go back to the Genesis moment when all this happened. I, um, I used to work in the corporate world for, oh man, I was, I was in the corporate world for about four, four and a half years. And then I decided, uh, my husband and I, for my husband's job, he was moving around a ton. Like his company was moving him all over the state of Texas. And I finally decided, I'm just, I, w- I want to stay at home. Like, I just want to be at home. My kids are young. So I started staying at home around, this would have been 2013, 2014. I started staying at home full time. And it was at that moment that I found myself kind of lost, right? Because I had been, I went to college and I was working for this big uh, corporation in downtown. It was in Dallas, Texas, like this very metropolitan area. And I thought, oh, this is my dream job, right? I went to college, like check. I did all the things I'm supposed to do. Now I have this corporate job that pays really well and I'm supposed to be happy, right? You're all, you're supposed to be fulfilled once you go along the path that you're supposed to take. But of course I found myself not loving what I was doing. So when I started staying at home, I felt very lost and frustrated because all of a sudden I'm like, so does my brain just go to mush? Like, do I just watch cartoons all day now that I'm here with the kids? Like, what am I actually supposed to do with myself? And I started kind of looking inward at what do I actually like? I started cooking. I became obsessed with watching like the Food Network and cooking shows. And I thought I wanted to be the next pioneer woman. I'm like, I'm just going to cook everything and homeschool my kids and do like everything's going to be a Pinterest perfect household. Uh, That is not what happened either. (laughs) That was a way for me to lead to a lot of stress. But um, but I came across, um, there's actually two pretty significant things that happened. I became obsessed with reading. Um, I was not ever really a reader when I was younger. I, um, I don't know if I just didn't make the time for it. I wasn't, I, I think the biggest thing is I wasn't really interested in reading, to be honest. And mm-hmm. we lived in a small town with nothing else to do, but to take my kids to the library. So I started taking the kids to the library and I was like, well, I mean, I might as well get some books and start reading. So I became obsessed with reading. And, um, one of the books that I read was Julia Cameras. It was the, our camera and always say her, it's the artist's way, which, um, 
is just so integral to my story and kind of finding uh, my way of journeying, doing my, my, the part of my journey that led me to journaling every day, doing my morning pages. And there was another book that I found at Barnes and Noble. And this was, this would have been like 2015 is when I got this book, but it was called Writing Down Your Soul. And I think it's Janet Connor, Janet O'Connor. It was one of those, like, you know, where you're walking through and like the discounted books and you're like, oh, this is cheap. I'll buy it. It looks okay. And it ended up being like, oh my gosh, this is fantastic. And I know that this is like a long-winded version, but this is like how everything started for me. And now here I am, you know, five, six years later, I still journal every single day, every single day. I have three journals. I write in a regular book. That's just like a creative writing that I do. Then I do uh, gratitude. So I have a gratitude journal. Then in 2020, I started my new year's resolution was to write one poem every single day. They're terrible, but I write them anyway. <laughs> so then, impressed. <laughs> and then I have like um like a prayer list. And the entire the entire thing probably takes me like my ritual under 30 minutes. I would say easily under 30 minutes. But it's what I do as soon as I wake up every single day. And I get up okay. very early in the morning. <laughs> so what sort of time do you rise? I get up at 5 a.m. Okay, okay. So I get up yeah. at 5 a.m. <clears throat> I can't quite bring myself to get up that early. My alarm is at 5.45, <laughs> so I'm getting there. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. <laughs> so that's a lot. And then, um, so you're doing your journaling every day, um, and your creative writing is part of that journaling. Is that right? Yeah. Do you, do you write separately on top of that? No, I mean, with, with everything that's going on with uh, my business, and how things have really changed in the last, I would say, um, not since December of this last year, have I sat down and wrote because in December I finished the draft of my, I guess it would be my third book. Wow. And, um, so I'm kind of more in the editing publishing phases of that book. But before then I, I really had taken a long break from writing since I, I mean, I guess probably since 2017, I haven't fully like intentionally, like on the weekends or whenever I had free time, sat down to write anything because I write so much in my business. I write emails, I write sales copy, I write all kinds of other things all the time. Mm -hmm. So that creative energy kind of felt depleted after I finished the book in December. I'm like, I got to take a break. <laughs> so no, that makes sense. Yeah. You kind of need a, a chance to what a lot of writers call, um, you know, fill the creative well. And sometimes that involves time away from writing yes. itself yeah. yeah doing other things um so you're doing that at the moment um so when so you that sounds like and you're saying it takes about half an hour so possibly for your doing the creative side at the moment it's about kind of 15 minutes perhaps 10 15 minutes that you're spending on that particular aspect of your journaling which right. to me right. kind of shows that that that's all you need really to do that sort of 10, 15 minutes, sure. 20 minutes on a regular basis is kind of all you need to get the ball rolling and get your ideas and, and start building a story. Um, so you took a break for a couple of years and then what made you decide to come back to it? What was the kind of kickstarter for you, do you think? So for me, so I published my first book. I tried blogging. So this is kind of part of the story as well. When I first started staying at home, I found um, one of the books that I read was a blogger. And I that was when I was first introduced to the whole world of writing online and doing blogs. And I thought, well, I could do that. And so I started blogging a long time ago very unsuccessfully, you guys, this is not a great blog. This is, this is not go on to do like, this is a crash and burn situation here. So I'm just <laughs> letting you know that I had no idea what I was doing, but I did it anyway. And so I started this blog and that is actually what became my first book, Rookie Devotionals. And that's what I published. And, um, it was, it started out as the same thing. It was just this practice that I did every day. And I had so many blog posts that were out there. I thought, you know, I'm going to turn this into a book. So that's what I did. And then come full circle to 2019, I realized that I have created so much content about what I do because I teach entrepreneurs how to start podcasts. And I'm like, man, I have so much content out there 
And I've had several people in passing say, have you ever thought about writing a book, another book? And I'm like, I have no idea what I write a book about. And then I look back and I'm like, yes, I do. I can absolutely <laughs> write a book about podcasting because there aren't very many options out there that are good. <laughs> like there, There's a lot of like quick eBooks that are like, you know, 20 pages, but it's nothing very in depth that takes you on a journey from, I have no idea what I'm doing to, I have a fully published and marketable, sustainable podcast. So, so that's really what it was. It was just inspiration kind of in the marketplace, seeing people asking for a book about podcasting, but they're not really being anything out there that is from my perspective, mm -hmm. because I have a very different perspective than some of the industry experts that are out there. So does Absolutely. that answer your question? Yes, it does. Yeah. And you've kind of found that, um, that inspiration that, that suddenly dawned on you, that idea, that little spark of light that said, ah, this is where I need to go. This is what I need to be doing next. And um, so, yes. And I think it, you know, just translating that across to novelists, that can be the same thing. It's just that little moment of inspiration that can start as something small and then build into a bigger picture and then an idea for a full, full book or a full story. So, right. So now that you're in the editing phase, how are you finding that? Is, that? is it quite easy to pull everything together or are you finding you've got a lot of material and in fact, you need to pare it down and pick and choose what you're going to use? So it's funny because with my first book, I did not hire an editor. I have a, my sister-in-law, she's, um, she's a paralegal. So she's really good at technical writing and all like contracts and very, um, very straight to the point, like very formal writing. And so she, uh, along with my husband's grandmother, it was, it's so sweet because uh, she helped um, edit my book. So the two of, between the two of them, I was like, surely I can, you know, make this decent enough to publish. But with this book, I thought I really want to hire an editor. So I did. So I finished the draft in December. I hired an editor who uh, she finished everything. I think that the first draft of the book was done in February of 2020. Now I'm to the point where I recently just formatted everything. And um, she helped me pare down so much of the fluffy stuff. And okay. I mean, hiring an editor that actually knows what they're doing, <laughs> like it really makes all the difference because I really did have a great, like the, the bare bones of the book were so good but she helped me with the structure of mm -hmm. the grammar that I'm definitely not good at. I'm not good at that ever. Even on my podcast, most of the time I'm like, did I just make up a word? I'm pretty sure that that <laughs> happened, but it's nice to have someone that knows the style that I was going for in my writing, because while some of the things that I want to get across in my, in my book can seem almost like textbook or like a how-to manual, like how to do this. I did not want it to read that way because I know my audience, excuse me. And as they relate to me, they relate to my casualties of like just my language. And I really wanted that personality like to shine through in my writing. So I didn't want someone to be like, oh, this is not formal. I'm like, no, I want it to read almost like a novel okay. in a way that I'm, I'm just infusing all of my stories and stories from my experiences into this book. So it's more relatable because that's what my audience wants. And I, and I know that with my first book, I didn't know any of, I didn't have an audience. I was just like, I'm going to publish this book and put it out there. But now that was one of the things that I learned is if you really understand who you're writing for, it just makes it so much easier. And it helps you kind of make those judgment calls on whether it needs to be written a certain way in a certain format. And kind of where you can bend the rules a little bit, because I know that there are rules out there for publishing and for writing, but when you know, like you have that creative piece, uh, like you can see it, you can see the end result, even if nobody else can, at least you have like, okay, this is what I'm aiming at. This is where I'm heading towards. So you have a vision in your head of what you're writing and why you're writing and who it's for. Yeah. And um, I actually, I have more of like a, I almost have, because I know my audience so well, I have a feeling that I want them to have as they're reading it and as they're going through the pages. I think that was even more important to me because the ideal reader for the book that I'm working on, this podcast book, is someone who's very overwhelmed. Whenever they, they pick it up, they see it, they're like, oh, this is going to help me. And so mm -hmm. I imagine 
that reader when they're done, like, man, th this was so helpful. That was the word that I just kept thinking of the whole time. This is so helpful and I can do this. So it's just about helping and really instilling that confidence mm -hmm. that they can accomplish everything that's in the pages. Oh, I can't wait to see it. It's so, so, yeah. so exciting. <laughs> I'm going to take you back just a moment though, because um, you mentioned before that your first book, you said, I didn't know what I was doing. I just knew I wanted to write something and I just wanted to get it out there. I think as a lot of uh, my listeners, they struggle with confidence quite a bit. And there's a lot of imposter syndrome that goes around, as I think there is in most industries. Mm -hmm. What was it that made you think, do you know what? I'm going to face my fear. I'm just going to do it. I'm going to put it out there because uh, because I want to. What kind of made you get over that that hump, if you like, of thinking, I can't do this. Who do I think I am? I'm just going for it. Well, I have to say, as far as when it comes to my personality, like who I, what is in my DNA, I think that I'm a fairly confident person in looking stupid. <laughs> <laughs> and that comes from, that's just how, that's who I've always been. Like, I mean, ever since I was little, I was, I was the kid that was never afraid to like, nobody was dating, there's music on, nobody's dancing at a party. And I just go out there in the middle of the floor and I don't care if I look stupid. So, so part of it is like that innate, like, this is just who I am and my personality. And part of it was, I just really gave myself permission to enjoy the ride of like not knowing what I was doing and accepting the fact that like, what's the worst that could happen? You know, somebody gives me a one-star review. Okay. I'm not going to die. I'm not going to be homeless if that happens. Mm -hmm. And you know, what is nobody buys my book except for, you know, my mom and my husband, <laughs> that's okay. Like then, then that's a learning experience. But I think that, um, another thing, this is, this is kind of like another backstory to my corporate when I was kind of like on the outs of like, okay, I'm so over this job. I sat down and I listened to Ted talks. I had a very mundane data entry kind of job. And so before podcasts were really into my life, I started watching TED Talks and listening to TED Talks and they were talking about just fear and just putting yourself out there and over and all these super inspirational stories of you know people that had nothing and they were going to lose it all and yet they did it anyway and then and like unimaginable things they could never think about mm. happen to them because they took that step you know they just like I feel it in my bones that I need to do this mm -hmm. and one of my biggest driving factors was I wanted to see my name published on a book. Like that was my only goal as I didn't even care. I didn't care how many people bought it. I wanted to see my name published on a book. And I don't know if that's vain to say that, or, you know, like kind of has any kind of arrogance behind it, but it, it wasn't about having it in a bookstore and on a number one sellers list. It was mm -hmm. just something printed that I did not print myself, you know, from my printer here in my office that, <laughs> that it's on a book and it sits on someone's bookshelf that just like there was something in, in me that I just thought, I just, that's all I want. That's all I want. So that was kind of my driving force is like, I don't care if this is dumb. I don't care if it totally fails. Like I'm, I'm not doing this for money. I'm not doing this for anything else. I'm just doing it to try something new because it was one of those, like, I don't know. I don't know if you feel this way, Emma, but it's like, I just know that I just want to do this. I, I, I don't know why I can't fully explain it. It's just a feeling that I have that I am meant to share a message this way. And I just, I haven't really stopped writing since. Oh, it's wonderful. And no, I think, I think that is the case for a lot of writers. It is this kind of intangible feeling or drive or desire that when asked, why do you want to write? It's something we all find quite difficult to put put into words even yes. though that's what we do um but it is it's just this innate need inside to communicate to share a message as you're saying um and some people have you know they they do have a genuine message to share because they're they perhaps write a political novel or um they want to write the novel of our generation you know a feminist novel or something let's go and then others just want to entertain and take give other give their readers a bit of escapism and then others again who want to share their own life experiences and what they've learned from it in the hope that that is going to uh, help somebody else as well like you're doing with your your podcasting book so it's fantastic I love it um you mentioned that you watched a lot of TED talks to get some inspiration for overcoming your own fears 
Are there any writers, um, apart from Julia Cameron um, and the other lady who I'll look up, that writing down your soul? Was that the... Yeah, I think it's Janet Connor or Janet O'Connor. I always forget what her name is. But yes. oh, is it writing down the bones. No, it's writing down your soul, but she might yeah. have another one because it, it what it was for her, um, it was she I think she went through like a nasty divorce and she didn't know how to process things. And something for me is I went through, and it's funny because now in hindsight, I can see like there was a lot of personal things going on in my life at that time. And I didn't know how to process them. I was a new mom. We were moving a lot. I was quitting my job. Like all kinds of things were happening inside of me. And at the time, in order for me to process them, I started working out. I started running and like, yeah, that helped, you know, it was good for me physically to do that, but I was still missing this almost spiritual and mental capacity for me to really express myself. And, um, when I first started writing, it was like this dam opened and I remember I would sit and I, I journaled a lot, lot more way back in the day. Cause I've been doing this for almost six years now. And I remember I would sit down and I would just fill pages and pages because I was like, Oh, this is actually how I'm feeling because what is it? It's, um, Oh, my mom is going to be so mad at me if I can't get this quote right. It's Joan Didion. And if it's like, I, I don't know what I feel until I write it down. Mm -hmm, I totally that's it, yeah. I? <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it's like, that's, that's exactly how I felt. And um, so, so that book was very helpful for me. But if, if you're asking about, I, I just think of one book that, and I don't do this. I'm not usually a rereader of books. I will read a book once, get everything I need from it. And you know, it goes on a shelf somewhere or I give it to someone else, but big magic by Elizabeth Gilbert is the audio. I've listened to this audio book at least three to four times every year since it came out. Wow. I like if I'm feeling in a creative rut and I may not even listen to the whole thing, it's like I get to a point in it that I needed it. And I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, I got it. That's what I needed. But that is, if there is ever a book I give to anybody to recommend, it is Big Magic by Elizabeth Gilbert. Yes, yes, I see your copy there. Oh my gosh, I, I love it so much. And I don't know. It's something about her writing. I feel like I've read, I've read almost everything. I haven't read her most recent book. Um, is it city of girls or something? Mm, yeah. I haven't read her most recent one. I've but actually never I, read any of her fiction, only her nonfiction, but oh I absolutely gosh. agree with you. I bang on about this book all the time. Um, and even if you're not a writer, if you're doing anything and anything all creative, it yes. helps you see the big picture and that it's, a, as you were mentioning earlier, it's about the process kind of about doing it and experiencing it. And um, she really is ins inspirational in that way, I think. Yeah. Yeah, that would be my number one go-to for anybody. So if you're listening to this and you have not read Big Magic, you have to get, and I, I highly encourage if you're not into reading like a paperback book, the audio book is fantastic because she reads it and she just has such good inflection when she's reading and like just the way that she tells stories. She's an unbelievable storyteller, yeah. but her writing really speaks to me. And going back to what we were talking about earlier, whenever you think about your reader and who's actually going to be reading this, I imagine she sat down and wrote that book for someone exactly like me, because I was in that stage of like, try, I needed permission. Like I can't call myself a writer. You know, I'm just writing scribbles in my journal. Like that's, mm. that's not a writer. You have to be published. You have to be on a bookshelf in a major bookstore on Amazon in order to call yourself a writer. But after reading that, I was like, oh, I am a writer and I need to say confidently, no, I'm a writer. Even if I've never published anything, this is who I am. Like as mm -hmm. a person, I have my titles of wife, mom, daughter, sister, everything. I'm also a writer, even if I never published anything else. That's just part of my identity because it's who I choose to be. It's what I wake up and do every single day. And it is just... I feel lost without it. And I know that sounds crazy, but it's so okay. true. I feel absolutely lost on days. I used to skip days, like in the summertime, I would walk away from my journals. I'd, we'd go on vacation and I'd leave them at home and I wouldn't take them. 
And I would just feel almost like I'd get grumpy if I didn't do my journaling and I'd get home and I'd get back into my groove and I'm like, oh, this is what was missing. So I don't know if that's like a codependency on my journaling or what it is, but your mental health. Yeah. It's just yes. looking after your mental health. I think it's, yeah, it's, it's, um, for some people they need to exercise for others. We need to write and we need to express our, so that part of our brain needs to be expressed. Now I'm going to change tack slightly because, um, when we talked before, um, I sort of knew that you were writing this sort of self-help memoir type book. Um, but you also mentioned you're writing a children's book. So I'd love to hear a little bit more about that, what the inspiration behind that was. So it's funny because I have a children's book that I've written. It's it's done, but it's kind of, I've kind of let it slowly die a miserable death. <laughs> and that's okay. That's okay. Like I can say that because I've let it go. The only reason why is because um, in, this would have been 20, 16, 2017, around that time. Um, no, I guess it would have been 2017 because so I self published my rookie devotionals book, which is the blog that I turned into an actual book and I published it on Amazon. I self published it. And then after that, I thought, you know, I should try some other, a different route. And so one day, my oldest son and I sat down and we wrote this story together and it was a one page, like a letter piece of paper. Like that was it. We wrote this. It was King Trey Zico. He's the King of the jungle. It was about this lion and all this, like, it was very sweet thing that I did with my son. Well, then we moved. This was one of our moves in uh, 2017. And at that point, um, I don't know if you've heard of it's the society of children's book author it's scbwi i always forget yes. what it is but the society of children book authors writers and illustrators and um there was a conference and it was an hour away from my house and i literally i found out about it on a wednesday and it was that coming saturday and it was not cheap it was not like oh you go for 25 it was like 250 dollars okay. and i was like i just had a feeling it's like i need to go to this i need to go to my husband was like you're you, you wrote this one story one time and I had kind of edited it and made it a little bit longer. And I knew a little bit about, and I was like, no, I need to go to this, this conference. And so I ended up going and I learned so much about the publishing world and about how you get a literary agent, how you work with publishing houses. I learned about indie houses and I just learned, like it just blew my mind, all the things that I didn't know. Mm -hmm. And I actually, I paid to have a, like do a pitch. I pitched my children's book to this independent publisher. They gave me tons of great feedback. And then it was at that point, it was like, okay, here are all, like they laid it out for me here are all the other steps that you have to take in order for a publishing house of any kind to publish your book. And it talk about me feeling defeated because basically it was like, okay, I poured my heart out. I did this thing. I thought it was great. You know, people that love me, of course, told me it was amazing. Like, this is fantastic. But then I realized like, oh, I have to jump through like 50 more hoops to actually get this published on a bookshelf in the traditional sense of publishing. And it was very, I don't know, I guess I, I just didn't feel like I had any more in me to really give to that because that's not what I wanted to do. I was like, I don't want to write children's books. Like I imagined going into schools and reading this book or going to libraries at story time and reading this book. And I already had three kids, three small kids at that time. Mm -hmm. And it just kind of exhausted me to think about the journey that it would take me on. I, it's like, I could see the writing on the wall and I thought, this isn't, this isn't the route that I want to go. So I let it die a slow, miserable death, but it's okay. It's okay because it was such a blessing to have that little journey with my son and be able to do it. But that opened up so many other doors of understanding the publishing world. And eventually it's funny because when I first started podcasting, one of the authors that I met, she is a young adult author. She spoke at the conference and we've, uh, she's here in Texas. So I have actually chatted with her a few times. We've emailed back and forth. And she had one of her books sold, uh, Leonardo DiCaprio bought 
the movie rights to one of her books and hopefully eventually it's going to turn into a movie and I'm just like I know her I met her at this conference this one time so it's like I have that cool story and she was on my podcast a long time ago and it was just it's just little things like that that have like built onto my journey that like, so the message behind all of it is sometimes you just have to take a leap of faith and take that first step and you don't know where it's going to lead to. Like I thought, oh, I'm going to go to this conference. I'm going to be a children's book author. I'm going to be published. Like this is what I'm going to do. And then I got there and I'm like, oh, this isn't for me, but it opened up so many other opportunities and things for me to think about, like the possibilities of what needed to happen for me to keep going on this journey or a different way that I could pivot. So that's just wow. I love your um your can do attitude. I love that you just think let's give this a go and see where it takes me and you follow your heart and it, it, you knew you needed to go to that conference to find out that was not the route that you wanted to go on but you right. met some lovely people along the way and I would sort of yeah encourage all the listeners there to follow your heart and even if it doesn't end up where you anticipate it you'll you'll discover whole new other avenues along the way which will take you in places that you never even dreamed of before right. I mean certainly I find that for myself when I think about here I am, I am, I'm a published novelist, I have a podcast, I get to talk to lovely people like you. Um, you know, five years ago, I could never have envisaged that. But by taking that leap of faith in myself, and just going with it, um, and publishing my novel really did change my life. And it's one of the reasons I do this is I so want other people to experience that as well, particularly other women who have maybe entered the second half of their life and are looking for something new much like you I was a stay-at-home mom and I had three kids and I was like going a bit insane and um, <laughs> I needed something for me for myself and it started with the journaling and then it turned into the novel writing and now here we are so please if you're thinking about it um, or you're feeling nervous about it just go ahead take the take the plunge and you never know where it's going to lead you um, so you've had a lot of learnings um, and I think, um, I think maybe I would love to just ask you what advice you might have for somebody who is um, not a novelist, but because I know, um, particularly in my Facebook group, I've got quite a few people looking to write their own memoir. How would you, was there any kind of advice that you might give to them to, to get them started at, at the beginning of the process? So when I, when I think about writing in general is, um, and this is a terrible term, but it's, it's so true. It's, you have to do a good brain dump, you know, like you have to, you have to just get it all out, whether it means just getting all of your ideas out or trying to figure out the format of the way you want things to flow or the way that the big stories you want to tell or the big aha moments, like whatever that looks like for you. And so whenever I sit down and this was something, I don't really know that I learned this in big magic, but this is something I learned that I've carried through with my podcasting and any kind of writing I do today is you cannot edit while you are writing. You absolutely have to have those tasks be totally separate. Like you don't, like you just write. I don't care if there's 75,000 typos in your first 20 pages, you do not touch those. You just keep writing. And another thing is, y'all, I'm going to admit this. I'm, I don't love the process of writing. And I, I just think that I should say that out loud because I think a lot of people just like they see writers and they're like, oh, they must love every single step of the process. And I'm just like, no, 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 no. <laughs> like, but it also doesn't have to be like here, like the polar opposite. It doesn't have to be painful either. <laughs> what a lot of people imagine. So for me, I'm an okay typist on the computer, but I found, I use Google voice in my Google docs and I will, because I can speak a lot easier, like the cursor will blink, blink at me and it's like, oh my gosh, I can't look at it anymore. But if I turn on the voice typing and I just start talking, that's actually how I wrote the majority of part of my memoir that I have that's in a draft on my computer somewhere. Mm -hmm. But, um, but yeah, so just, just turn, just start, just start. And it's going to be terrible. It's going to be awful. And that is okay. Like that is absolutely okay. Because if you learn anything along the journey, that makes it worth it. Even if you just learn like, okay, this was a terrible first draft. I need to go in this other direction. Or you learn something about yourself 
or someone in your family, if you're writing a memoir, like it's, it's all worth it. But if you just sit around and, you know, you look back at your life and you're like, man, I never had a chance to write my novel. You're never going to have the perfect time. It's never going to be the right circumstance. It's always going to feel rushed and you're going to just, you know, all the things, all the excuses. But if you just get started, like who knows what can happen, right? Like who who knows what can happen, you know, come out. And actually I just thought while I was sitting here thinking about the editing versus the writing process, I do recommend the book on writing by Stephen King. If you have not read that book, oh my goodness, because I, I didn't go to school. I did like, I didn't go to school for English for writing and I did terrible, terrible. Oh my gosh. In high school and college on all my papers. But that book taught me so much about how to just get it out of you. Again, going back to just, just write, Mm -hmm. just write all the other things. You can hire someone to edit and format and do all the other things. Just get the ideas out of your head and just get started and just keep going. Yeah, such great advice. That's I'm very much a believer of that as well. Just get going, start writing. Don't worry about being perfect. Somebody said to me recently, you know, we turn up to every other part of our life imperfectly. Why not our writing as well? And that made sure. a lot of sense to me. Yeah. So I'm a big believer that there is um, an audience for every book. Is that something that you might subscribe to? Or do you think that you're writing well no I think you've kind of perhaps answered this for me I was going to say do you think there needs to be um a certain standard that people aim for or do you feel that there's like a there's an audience for every genre and every type of book I think that there is someone out there that if you are willing to write it someone is willing to read it I I really truly believe that and I feel like I'm living proof of that because (laughs) When I think of my my books and my podcasts and everything that I do, when I first got started, I was like, no one's going to listen to this. No one is going to read anything that I put out, whether it's online or in a blog post, an email, a book, anything like that. I truly believe, I think that that's the imposter syndrome that's mm-hmm. setting in, that's saying, who are you? to put your ideas out into the world. Like, you know, we see people like Elizabeth Gilbert, who has published, you know, or sold millions and millions of books. And we're like, well, she has something special. No, she doesn't. She just has the ability to really connect with her reader and be able to tell a story that keeps you engaged. Mm -hmm. You can, those are skills that you can learn. And if you look at her, and this is why I love using her an example, because if you look at her journey, Y'all, she used to work in a bar for years and years. And all she did is write stories. She wrote novellas. She wrote short stories. She wrote all, like she was constantly honing her craft in between just living her life. And I think that that's really what we have to do is, you know, if you're going to commit to being a writer, then you have to write every single day. You have, I don't care if it's a poem. I don't care if it's a to-do list. I don't care what it is. And honestly, like this is going to sound silly, but part of my journaling, that's what it is. It's my mental brain dump of, okay, today I have to do blah, blah, blah. And I will write about it. I'll write about my goals. I'll write about my dreams. I'll write about my kids. I'll write about my husband frustrating me. I'll write about a fight I got in with my mom. I'll write about whatever, but it's just the the movement and the journey, the process of writing, because that's the only way to get better. You have to do it every single day. Mm -hmm. Oh, wise words, such wise words. Thank you. Well, I think we've sort of, um, uh, you know, I've taken up a lot of your time already. So I wonder if you could just um, let us know where, if the listeners are interested, where they could find out a little bit more about you. Yes. So I would love for you to join me on Instagram or Facebook. I have, uh, it's crystal profit TX it's crystal with a K profit with two F's and two T's and then TX like Texas. So you can come hang out with me on social media. And then I actually, if anybody is interested in learning how to podcast, um, or learning more about the podcast book, I have a, um, I have a free online community that you can find me on Facebook. It's the Profit Podcast online community. And then I also have a podcast or a book launch team. If you're interested in seeing, I've been sharing all the behind the scenes with my book launch team. So if you want to know what that looks like, mostly for the last few weeks because of 
all the coronavirus and everything, it's mostly me saying, I don't want to write. I don't know what to write about. I don't know what I'm doing anymore. And then it was more videos like, okay, I think I'm starting to get traction. So if you want to see what that looks like, you can go to crystalprofit.com slash podcast book and find more about that. <laughs> oh, fantastic. Um, well, Crystal, I am just so delighted to have you on. You, you, I love your energy and your enthusiasm, and I really hope you've inspired some of my listeners just to go out there, not worry about imposter syndrome, just do it and see where it takes them. Thank you so, so much. Thank you for having me. I so hope you enjoyed that conversation as much as I did. I find Crystal to be a wonderful breath of fresh air. She inspires me with her enthusiasm and her gung-ho attitude and her let's do it approach to everything. She's really helped me remember that I love to write, that I've just got to go ahead and do it, just dive in and see what happens. And I hope she does the same for you. If you are cautious about your writing, if you're anxious about your writing, I hope you'll take a leaf out of Crystal's book and just dive in and see where it takes you. As she says, what's the worst that can happen? Nobody's going to die. It's all in in the spirit of life and the spirit of trying things out and seeing where it takes you. One thing leads to another, to another, and you can end up somewhere you never, ever expected to. Certainly, when I started my writing journey, I never expected I would have a podcast. And here we are. <laughs> so please do take a leaf out of Crystal's book and don't let fear hold you back. Jump in with both feet and see what happens because you may just surprise yourself. All right. Now, I just want to have a quick word about my Facebook group. I don't know if you've heard, but I do have a Facebook group called Turning Readers Into Writers. And it is aimed specifically at you if you are a beginner writer and you're looking to find the time and confidence to write your first book. So if you go to emmadesi.com forward slash turning readers into writers, you'll find the link to join the group. And in the group, we have not only sort of advice and education and inspiration, but we have a weekly Q&A session and we all ha also have guest experts come in and chat to us on all manner of things. And of course, we are there as your support and cheerleader. So go to emmadesi.com forward slash turning readers into writers, or you can go to Facebook and search directly turning readers into writers. Lovely. I hope to see you in there. Take care. Bye bye.